Hi everybody, I'm Chrissy from Freedom Ranch Wildlife Center. I just want to invite you all on an exciting adventure around the world. We're going to head to South America, Africa, Australia, and then back to North America to find some fabulous wildlife. Hi everybody, I'm Chrissy at Freedom Ranch. I'm happy to be with y'all today. Now, we're gonna learn about animals from four different continents today. So I encourage you all, if you want to, after this video, maybe make a passport and give yourself a stamp on each continent that you learn about these different animals. Now, the first continent we're gonna go to is South America. That's where Ruby the Scarlet Macaw is from. Miss Ruby is about 24 years old, but she can live to like 70 or 80 years. So she's still pretty young. We're going to put Ruby up here on this training perch and see if she wants to do her behaviors for you all. Parrots are very smart animals. Let's see if she'll wave. Can you wave? Good girl. How about the other one? That's an awesome girl. Now watch how she eats that seed. They have a powerful and dry tongue that helps them get into seeds and nuts and fruits. And that's what they do in the rainforest. They are important seed dispersers in the rainforest of Central and South America. Let's see if Miss Ruby will show y'all her wings. Let's see her wings. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's turn around in the back and see all of those beautiful colors. Wings. Wings. Good job. Let's face your crown again. Ruby loves to work and it's an absolutely beautiful day as well. Now, if you guys notice, her eyes are on the side of her head. So she can't see straight in front of her. She sees all around her. And that's because she's a prey animal, an animal that other animals like to eat. And she kind of stands out. She's large and red, so she's got to see all around her. But when she needs to focus on something, look what she does. Can you look up? That's a good girl. Can you look down? That's a very good girl. That's a cute little behavior there, but it shows you just how they have to turn their heads to really zone in on something up close. Now, Ruby knows the answer to a few simple questions. Let's ask her and see if she thinks today is a beautiful day. Is today beautiful? It is a beautiful day. Ruby, are you red? Are you red? Yes? Yes? I would say she's red, right? That's good. Let's see. Ruby, are you purple? No, she doesn't have any purple on her, right? She's a very, very smart bird indeed. Good job, Miss Ruby. Can you wave goodbye? That's a good job. All right, so coming up next, we're going to see another animal from South America. Well, we just hopped on our virtual airplane and we left from Mississippi and we traveled all the way to the Amazon rainforest. We met Ruby the Scarlet Macaw. I wonder who else? around Freedom Ranch is from the Amazon rainforest. Let's find out. Well, we have to stay up high in the Amazon rainforest to find this guy. This is a green iguana. His name is Dean. He's demonstrating to you a behavior called a head bob in the iguana world. When they do the head bob, that means they have seen something threatening to them. In Dean's case, it's probably our turkey. He doesn't like our turkey, so he shows just how big and bad he is to our turkey. Now, green iguanas have very special tails. Their tails are powerful weapons. If something climbs up into that tree after them, they can whip them with that tail, and that tail hurts. They can also hang out above the rivers, and if they sense danger from above with their third eye, it's a really cool, clear scale on the top of their head. If they sense danger with that third eye, they'll drop down into the river and swim away really quickly with that tail. Now, green iguanas have lots of ways to hear and to show off that clear scale on the side of his head is his ear holes so he can hear you really really well and just behind that ear he's got kind of a circle scale and that circle scale is larger in the boys than it is in the girls and that helps the boys show off so that they can get a wife a little bit quicker these are absolutely beautiful animals in the rainforest and they are herbivores that means they eat only vegetation but 
he still has sharp teeth. These guys have razor sharp teeth, but those razor sharp teeth are only used to pull up vegetation. And in just a second, we're gonna see a video of Dean eating a great big salad with no salad dressing, but with lots of butternut squash and yellow squash and maybe a few berries mixed in with those collard greens. Are you getting hungry? Let's hop back on our virtual airplane and head towards the more southern tip of South America to meet some unique little mammals called Patagonian cavies. The adorable Patagonian cavy is the fourth largest rodent in the world. That puts them in the same family as the rat, the mouse, the squirrel, even the guinea pig. As a matter of fact, the guinea pig is their closest relative. So they can make all the same sounds as a guinea pig. They can growl, they can purr, they can grunt, they can whistle when they're really excited. They have long skinny legs that help them to run fast. They can run 25 miles an hour, but they need to be able to run that fast because they have predators. Not just natural predators like animals, but people predators. These guys are near threatened because people have over hunted them. People like to eat them and use their pelts for different things. People have also introduced the sheep and the European hare into their area in South America. And the sheep and the European hare are eating all the grass. So now the Patagonian cavies don't have as much to eat and they're not having as many babies as they used to. Pretty sad. Now we've got three cavies here, Sherlock, Willow, and Daisy. We love having them here. These guys have some funny looking tails and they sit on those tails along with the leather patches on the backs of their legs. They're pretty cool little animals. You may have noticed their large noses. Well, they love to eat and they love to smell for their food. Here's a cute video of our guy smelling and eating. Cavies also love to play. So enjoy a little video clip of Sherlock, Willow, and Daisy playing. Let's hop back on our virtual airplane and leave South America and head to Australia, to an animal that's found everywhere there. All right, who's ready to go to yet another continent? How about Australia, where the second largest bird is from? This is an emu, or if you're from Australia, they say emu in Australia. So emus, emus, they're the second largest bird in the world. They're comical birds, full of personality. And we're gonna tell you more about their natural history in just a few minutes. But they eat in a very funny way. They kind of throw their food back in their mouths. This is Edmund and this is Emmy. They're three years old. All right, so let's go explore the continent of Australia. Welcome to Edmund and Emmy's place. Now here's some emu eggs. They're quite beautiful. Emmy laid 31 this season, crazy. And this is an emu track. It looks more like a dinosaur foot, right? So let's get to know more about these strange comical birds. Emus are the second largest bird in the world behind the ostrich. You got it right. The ostrich is from Africa. They're 500 pounds. The emu from Australia weighs about 150 pounds when they're fully grown, but they're still powerful animals with a powerful kick in those legs. They can run 30 to 35 miles an hour. Now they do have large holes on the side of their head, 
that helps them to hear. That's their ear holes. And they have really thick feathers because they have two feathers per pore instead of one. So that's a lot of feathers for these birds to clean. And Emmy is showing us her wing. Did you see that tiny wing on her body? Those wings are way too tiny to help her fly. They are in a group of birds we call the ratite family or the flightless bird family. Now, when they were young, they had black feathers all over their neck. Now, as they mature and they grow up, they have a more blue neck. Emus also make some cool sounds. The girl, like Emmy here, drums. It sounds just like they're playing a drum in their chest. And the boys, like our Edmund, will grunt, kind of like a pig, or make a growling sound. Their sounds can be heard from one mile away. Another pretty cool fact about emus is the fact that the females only lay the eggs. Then the males take over. They incubate the eggs and then they care for the young once they are hatched. Now Edmund hasn't figured out how to do this. He basically kind of guards the eggs, covers them up, displays around them, tries to sit on them, but always kind of misses. But it's been quite entertaining. We're not here to breed emus anyway. We're here to educate about them. Now enjoy these last few videos of Emmy trying a banana, and she didn't like it, and our emus playing just a little bit. The next Australian animal is a bearded dragon. Bearded dragons are cool little lizards that are found in the desert area of Australia. They're lizards and not snakes because, of course, they have legs, but they have those cool ear holes on the side of their head, too. The reason they're called a bearded dragon is because when they're upset, they puff out their chins and they turn them black, and it looks like a beard. And then they kind of look like a dragon, so they're bearded dragons. Let's enjoy these videos of Falcor and Sandy eating some worms. Let's hop back on that virtual airplane and go from Australia to Central Africa. We're going to take a trip to the African rainforest first. This is my good buddy Walter. He's a ball python. He loves the rainforest of Africa. It's nice and humid and there's lots of trees to crawl around in. They're ambush predators so they don't move very fast and they love to hang out on the trees and wait for something to scurry by so they can sneak up on it, grab it, squeeze it to death, and then swallow it whole. Pretty amazing predators. Let's see what else we can find in Africa. Ball pythons are called ball pythons because when they're scared, they curl up in a tight ball and hide their heads. Now, all snakes have these fabulous tongues that help them sense their surroundings. What they do is they flick their tongue out, they collect particles off of the air onto their tongue, and then they take their tongue into the roof of their mouth to a Jacobson's organ. That Jacobson's organ sends messages to their brain, and they know exactly where that rat or that mouse or that bird or other little warm-blooded creature is that they would like to eat. And their tongues are forked because they can smell, in quotes, in two different directions. That tongue is fabulous. Now a snake of course does not have legs, but they do have lots of scales and lots of muscles that allow them to move. And they usually move in an S formation to kind of push themselves along on the ground. It's always fun to see a snake moving on the ground. Now that was in the rainforest. Now we're going to travel from Central Africa to Northern Africa. 
I'd like to introduce you to Rambo, our Salcata or African spur thigh tortoise that lives here at the ranch. These guys are the third largest tortoise in the world behind the Galapagos and the Eldabra tortoise. Now, he's a tortoise because he eats greens only. He also has those large back feet. They're kind of flat, just like an elephant's. That's for walking on the land. You can see he walks on the land very quickly and very well. These guys love to eat. They cannot go completely in their shells. That's why they kind of have those plate-like scales on the front legs. And that way, when he's in danger, he can pull his head in and put his legs straight in front of his face to protect his face. It's some terrific armor that this guy has. Now, Rambo is smart. He's target trained so we can move him from point A to point B because now he's up to about 85 pounds, 15 years old. He's just going to get bigger. He loves to eat. He loves to swim, which he usually doesn't get to swim out in the wild in the dry savannas of Africa. We absolutely loved having Rambo, the African Salcata tortoise here at the ranch. Let's talk about something prickly, the African Crested Porcupine. This is our resident porcupine, Mo, and we get questions a lot about those quills. Those quills are pretty fantastic. The first thing they're going to do if they feel threatened is they're going to puff out their quills and make themselves look twice as big. If that doesn't work, they can also stomp their feet. They can rattle the thick quills on the back. It makes them sound like there's a rattlesnake close by. And then if all else fails, they'll run backwards into the threatening animal and lodge those quills into his skin. That's very uncomfortable. That animal runs away and then the porcupine gets to live another day. So the porcupine cannot throw his quills. African crested porcupines are the largest of the porcupine and the third largest rodent in the world. They cannot see you well, but they can smell you well and they can hear you well. Mo is very smart. We have target trained him. We give him lots of toys to play with and lots of enrichment, basically something to think about, something to do. This is when he had a swimming pool and he was bobbing for apples. And this video shows you just how fast he can figure out how to get to the treats. Now, porcupines are major burrowers in Africa, and Mo does indeed like to dig, and he likes to play. So let's end the African crested porcupine with Mo playing. Oh my goodness, Mo. Oh my goodness. <laughs> go, Mo, go! Woo! -hoo -hoo. Woo! -hoo -hoo. It's time to hop back on our virtual airplane and head back to North America. This guy is Chuck. He's a Chuckwalla, a Western Chuckwalla, and he's actually from the United States. We have some very cool wildlife right here on our own continent and in our own country. If you travel out west, you'll run into the Western Chuckwalla. They have some amazing adaptations that help them survive. Do you see all those wrinkles on his skin? When he sees a predator coming after him, he'll run in between two rocks, he'll puff out his body on the sides and make himself get really lodged into those rocks where the predator can't pull him back out. And he's super safe in there. And then once the predator leaves, he lets all the air out of his body and he comes back out into the sun and has a great day, eating lots of vegetation and the occasional cricket or worm or something like that. Cool, cool little dudes, the Western Chuckwalla. Let's see some more native wildlife to North America. This is Chuck moving around and sensing his surroundings with his tongue. 
It's not just snakes that sense their surroundings with their tongue, it's lizards too. As a matter of fact, a lot of reptiles can do that. This next video is Chuck eating his salad and a few closing pictures of Chuck the Chuckwalla because let's face it, they're just cutie pies. Let's step out into our own backyards and see if we can spot one of my favorites, the red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawks are the largest and the most common hawk that we have all throughout the southeast. They are very important population managers as they like to eat rats, mice, snakes, rabbits, chickens, anything that they can catch. This is Zephaniah. She's our resident red-tailed hawk and we would love to tell you her story. But first, let's tell you what makes her a bird of prey. They have to have a couple of things in order to be a bird of prey. Number one, they've got to have these fabulous sharp talons on their feet and they've got to have a sharp hooked beak on their face. I like to tell people it's kind of like them having a sharp set of knives on their feet and a fork on their face. They're always ready to eat meat and Zephaniah knows I have a rat in my pocket and she's ready to eat that for you guys in just a minute. Birds of prey are always ready to eat. They are designed to catch, kill, and eat other animals. Red-tailed hawks specialize in squirrels, rabbits, rats, mice, snakes, bunny rabbits, anything they can catch, they absolutely love to catch. They're also called the chicken hawk because they're pretty good at catching our chickens too. But it's illegal to do anything to these birds so that they catch your chickens. It's up to us to take better care of our chickens. Put a better cover on your chicken coop to protect them from these red-tailed hawks. Because we want red-tailed hawks out in our skies. Now she's called a red-tailed hawk because of these beautiful tail feathers of hers. They're kind of a red or a brick red coloration. Absolutely beautiful bird. Let's see if she'll show us her wingspan. I'm kind of under a tree here. There she goes. She's thinking about that rat, folks. Now, hawks are known for their eyesight. Zeph here could see eight to ten times better than we can. So what that means is you can see a rabbit from one football field away. She could see a rabbit from eight to ten football fields away. That's amazing, right? But something happened to Zephaniah like something happened to all of our native birds of prey. They're all injured in some way, and that's the only reason we have them. Zephaniah was hit by a car on her left side, and you can even see the scar tissue right there in her left eye. So because she was hit by a car, she can no longer see out of her left eye, and she's a predator, and predators have binocular vision so that they can see straight ahead and zone in on their prey better, but she doesn't have that binocular vision anymore, so she kind of flies in a circle, and she's not able to zone in on that prey any longer, but you know what she can zone in on? The rat in my pocket. I've got a dead rat in my pocket. She's ready to eat. She hasn't had breakfast. This is going to be gross, but it's not sad at all. This rat has already gone to heaven, but it is going to be gross. We got a gross warning here. I'm going to throw this rat up there and she's going to demonstrate how they use their beak or the fork on their face as we like to call it. Here we go. Zephaniah likes to savor every bite. And do you think she's gonna waste anything on this rat? Absolutely not. She's even gonna eat the tail, eventually. Here we go. 
Mm, she says that was yummy good. That's basically like you guys eating chicken nuggets, right? Birds of prey are fantastic. Thank you for sharing your summer with us. We had a blast making animals around the world. Did you know that Freedom Ranch is home to 42 different species and over 70 individual animals? We love what we do. We're booking now. So call us or email us or join us on Facebook and check for availability and pricing today.